Let us welcome into Midpoint President of the TSD Security Consulting Group and former Supervisory Special Agent in the National Security Division at FBI Headquarters, Tanya DiGenova, and founder, president, and CEO of Advanced Capital LLC, an aerospace defense consulting firm, and a former senior U.S. Air Force official, Stan Vanderwerf. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Thank you for having me. Colonel, I'm going to start with you first here because specifically we're talking about Edward Snowden here. The whistleblower line is always, our country is acting illegally, so I must let the public know. From someone who served in the military and knows many times that this will put lives at risk in the military and other governmental agencies around the world, how do you feel about that line from whistleblowers? Well, I would say, uh, you know, we don't want any whistleblower giving away national secrets to any of our enemies. On the other side of the coin, we most definitely want citizens, American citizens, whether they're inside the government or outside the government, declaring abuses of power that the government may be carrying out against its citizens. So how, that would be my first take on that. How do you then, though, cut the difference between those two? Because when you say that sometimes uh, when you look at that line to one person, it's got to be the government is a problem. To another person looking at almost the same information, it would be this is something that is going to help our government and our people. Well, that's obviously a very difficult uh, line to draw, I think. I think in uh, Edward Snowden's uh, case, I think that I, I believe I can appreciate that he actually identified, uh, um, you know, uh, spying on American citizens that seems to be taking place. But I tell you, it's pretty suspicious to me that he's living in Russia now, and that is a big concern for me at that point. Tanya, from the security side of things, I would guess, well, we've certainly talked about it here on the show many times, the absolute thinking process that there's other people out there, Snowden, other people out there who are now turning over facts and there are certain pieces of information that are out there. From a security standpoint, you've got to be worried that maybe they're not always whistleblowers. Sometimes there may be something a little bit more nefarious in what they're planning on doing. Well, actually, I would like to just say that um, not every leaker is a whistleblower. And I would make be very, very clear that anyone who um, willingly and knowingly will violate a non-disclosure agreement with the United States government uh, to get a clearance, um, who th will steal U.S. government property, uh, and knowingly and willfully will disclose unauthorized classified information to an authorized person or country or a terrorist group um, at the expense of U.S. national security and national interest to me is not a whistleblower um, this is a person who violated really the espionage act i just say and we need to deal with these people very swiftly and use everything that the government has in its toolbox to stop this bleeding what about those people though who will answer back and say understood i may be breaking the law but i have to do this because it shows that our government is the one actually breaking the law. It is well, our government that is doing something against us. You know, if some 20 year old like Snowden or Bradley Manning or this new potential leaker here with no experience, uh, nothing invested in US national security or the US national interests, just has an issue with whatever, even with some of our policies, well, you know what? Use the chain of command, uh, if, uh, resign, leave the country, but don't harm us. Let me get to that, uh, Colonel Vanderwerf, because we just heard the words chain of command. If you're sitting in a military installation, for instance, like a Bradley Manning or others, when you're in a governmental installation, there certainly is a chain of command, but you can't always trust the chain of command. I'm just giving you what they will say, the whistleblowers. We can't trust those people because we may be saying something that may go against the people who are in the chain of command. So they feel they can't go to them in the first place. Well, you know, uh, um, all federal agencies do have those kinds of uh, uh, vehicles available to the uh, employees of those federal agencies. These are the inspector generals and so forth. And uh, I think it is wise to try to uh, work within the system first to see if uh, you can uh, resolve what you perceive or uh, uh, may be a, a real issue with that particular federal agency, and you might be an employee of that agency. But sometimes that agency has as a policy to do something that you believe is wrong and the inspector general or some other component of that federal agency might actually go after you. And you know, I think there are a lot of things that we do need to be concerned about with regard to uh, federal overreach. You know, different whistleblowers in their various manifestations, uh, if they were not part of our uh, fabric of society, you know, we might not have found IRS abuses against conservatives or 
uh, CIA spying on Congress, or maybe the Acorn scandals, or maybe details about Benghazi. So, you know, there are, uh, people do sign these non-disclosure agreements. They do have requirements they're supposed to follow when they have security clearances. But when the federal government is violating citizens' rights, uh, they, in my view, they are obligated to speak up. And uh, trying to work through the system first is fair, but if that becomes a problem for them, they need to go public and let the American citizens know that uh, there's something wrong going, uh, uh, something bad going on. Okay, Paula, I'm going to come to you on this right now because I'm going to spin a little bit right now and take it away from Edward Snowden, going to bring it back to the Veterans Administration here. I have a case sitting here in front of me. Phoenix, Arizona, 56-year-old woman. She was a 20-year employee at the hospital. She oversaw everything from news releases to the hospital newsletter, annual Veterans Day parade. In 2010, she joined a group that complained to the VA's upper management about the Phoenix Hospital's director. They alleged the director had allowed budget shortfalls and berated subordinates. Now, after more than 20 years, she basically has been demoted. She's sitting in a basement right now. She has no idea where she's at. She's in complete limbo at this point. So she feels as if there have been reprisals against her. Isn't it fair to say that when we're talking about whistleblowers looking for real problems here, whether it's the government or outside of the government, that people are just absolutely scared because they know they're either going to be blackballed or they're going to be stuck in a basement somewhere for the rest of their lives? If I may jump in. No, please, it's to you. Yeah, I would say in a case of the VA, uh, perhaps that would fall under the Whistleblower Protection Act. You know what I mean? And that's much more palatable to me and I would possibly if I had to choose between um, who is a whistleblower and who is not I would tend to side with perhaps uh, the whistleblowers at the VA versus a Snowden who is actually helping the Russians or someone this like like this new potential um, leaker who is now talking about terrorist watch list you know which would 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 actually even though that particular person may be leaking Oh, it's bad enough to leak classified information to the media, but the whole world is watching, to including Putin, to including, including the Chinese, to including the Syrian fighters coming back, you know, from their fight in Syria, and who else? Well, the bad actors living amongst us. So, to me, this is not a whistleblower. This is really someone who's affecting and deterring our national security. Whereas in the case of the VA, uh, maybe even of the IRS. That's to be debatable. Maybe that person is a whistleblower. Colonel Vanderwerf, other... Colonel Vanderwerf, how do we get these people then to understand that they should be doing what they're doing? And I'm, I'm going to talk specifically now about the Veterans Administration here because here comes that fear factor. Sure, there's a Whistleblower Protection Act, but honestly, there are people sitting there, come on, they're not going to protect me. They're going to do everything they can to hurt me once I basically reveal what's gone on here. How do we get those people to understand that, yeah, you're heroes if you do this. Come on, we want you to help the effort. Well, thank you. You know, uh, uh, those kinds of uh, people that find those kinds of things, they are heroes. And uh, the Whistleblower Protection Act, uh, you know, is supposed to protect them. There's even uh, recent legislation to try and enhance uh, provisions of that act. Uh, in, ultimately, in the end, if that individual still continues to fear reprisals against them, I would encourage them to continue to uh, put, the, uh, put those issues into public domain uh, because it is in the best interest of American citizens. Uh, and I, those people, they do deserve a day in court where they can explain what they saw, why they saw it, uh, and uh, why they believe it is wrong. And, you know, it's possible that they may be misinterpreting what is happening. But then, you know, here we have, like in the case of the VA, very specific cases where, in my, in my view, uh, veterans have been uh, abused by the Veterans Administration. Uh, and this is, of course, very, very unfortunate. Thank goodness. We uh, have bipartisan support in the Congress to try to make changes to that today. Tanya, I've only got about 30 seconds left here. Isn't it fair to say that a lot of these people do it for the celebrity factor, that some of them just want to become famous? Well, I agree there's a copycat factor, but we need to remember that we need to put our national security interests first and the protection of our people. There are plenty of people right now, especially it's a very critical situation. I mean, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. In the past, um, in the, uh, after the marathon bombing in Boston, everybody criticized the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security for not connecting the dots. Now they've connected the dots by including biometric data in there and pictures in their database, and now it, that's being leaked. You know what I mean? So you can't win yes or no would you like to see the u.s government hunt down edward snowden bring him back for for trial most certainly i would all right uh colonel vanderwerf 
Uh, yes, I would like Edward Snowden to come back and let him have his day in court and let the uh, dice fall where they fall. If he broke the law, he should be prosecuted, and if he didn't, then he's a hero. I think uh, he's a little bit afraid right now of exactly how that dice may fall. I think it might be worse, better for him in Las Vegas, actually. Uh, Colonel Stan <laughs> Vanderwerf, Tanya Di Genova, thank you so much for joining us both. We appreciate your time. Thank you Thanks, for having John. me. All right, later on this hour, reaction to a statement that there is no deep-seated anti-Semitism in the Middle East. And after the break, a man who was at the side of President Richard Nixon and was able to add some depth to the 37th President of the United States. It's coming up right here on Midpoint. <laughs>